Hello everyone, thanks for joining us for another edition of Texas Insider TV, brought to you by Speedstream. I'm Jim Cardle. Here we are at the end of January and the Texas Legislature's 84th session is a couple weeks old, which means much anticipation and organization in the House and the Senate leadership groups. State Representative Tan Parker from House District 63 was just elected chairman of the House Republican Caucus and Parker hails from Flower Mound, just north of Fort Worth and south of the city of Denton in the metroplex of Dallas-Fort Worth. What can we anticipate from the House leadership and how is the House and Senate going to handle this year's budget debate? Representative Tan Parker is here to visit with us as chairman of the House Republican Caucus and we appreciate you joining us. Tan, thanks for joining us. Honored to be here. Thanks so much, Jim. As I mentioned in the introduction, you are newly elected chairman of the House Republican Caucus as well as representative from House District 63. Let's just jump right in. Appreciate your time coming in and talk about the caucus. Give us, if you would, a thumbnail. There's 95 Republicans in the House here at Austin, the state legislative level now. What is the caucus? What uh, are some of the things that uh, folks might not know that you help organize or the guiding principles of the caucus, if you would. Absolutely. Well, thanks, Jim, for getting the opportunity. We've got actually 98 members in total when all these uh, fill, seats get filled. Okay. And uh, so, you know, obviously working with the 98 uh, in order to make certain that we have a conservative session is my objective. Uh, we want to make certain that we obviously uh, provide services as the caucus to the members. Uh, and what do those services look like? Well, first and foremost, of course, we have a policy committee. Uh, we'll have a policy committee that will take shape and, and formation here in the next couple of weeks. And that policy committee will help guide, uh, if you will, Republican members on various pieces of legislation that occur during the session. We're also going to work to uh, give members, if you will, a better content that they can uh, message and market uh, themselves in terms of the accomplishments of the House back to their constituencies back home in their individual districts. So those are two very important things that we're doing along with the strategy associated with how we in fact, deliver a, a, a strong conservative session as we've done in, in past sessions. How do we continue to do that uh, is really my focus as caucus chairman. Let me ask you real quick because you are replacing Representative Brandon Crichton as past caucus chairman who is now state senator. You had a bit of a race for the caucus chairman. Talk about the state of the caucus. Is it unified? Is it optimistic? What are you uh, hearing within your Republican ranks? I think our caucus right now is unified and I'm very proud of that. I think uh, the 98 are unified. We're focused on having a great session. Uh, I thought we got off to a great start with the rules debate uh, a few days back and uh, I believe we'll be able to continue that momentum throughout the rest of the session. Um, talking about the session again folks, I want to thank you for joining us for another edition of Texas Insider TV. We're visiting with Tan Parker from House District 63 and Chairman of the House Republican Caucus. Uh, chairman, tell me if you can about the specifics, maybe this legislative session. A lot of historians, many analysts, some critics have said, frankly, that last session was too conservative. It was certainly one of the most conservative sessions in the history of the House or the Texas legislature. Do you have any plans or do you see anything, how do you top it basically? The voters are becoming more conservative in Texas. Every statewide elected official got 60 percent. What What are your plans to maybe take on some key issues and top last session's accomplishments? Absolutely. Well I certainly don't think we've been too conservative. I, I think we had a very successful conservative session and I think we'll have uh, the ability this session to leverage the good work of the past uh, we did a lot of good things last session. I'm very proud, obviously, on the right to life issues. Those were extraordinary. I mean, uh, there's no vote that I've ever cast I've been more proud of than we banned that uh, horrific procedure of uh, aborting babies uh, at, uh, at 20 weeks. So that was a tremendous, I think, conservative accomplishment, just like passing voter ID has been in recent sessions, along with the fact that we've always had very conservative budgeting uh, here in Texas as well. So I think those are hallmarks of what you'll see take place here during the 84th. I think we'll focus on all of those items along with doing several new items. And I think, um, you know, beyond that, we'll leverage, if you will, our historical investments in border security. And I want to point out the fact that we've actually invested more in border security in recent years uh, than ever before in our history. So we've been taking this issue very seriously ever since I've been a member. Um, 
and, and I'm very proud of that. And you'll see us continue to take this very seriously, putting additional resources and capabilities on the border to secure all of our people. You know, as the Corrections Chairman, Jim, I'll tell you, you know, there's nothing more important to me than the safety and security of all 27 million Texans. Okay. And I passionately believe uh, that the border piece of that is a huge component. It's not just about the drug trade. It's not just about traditional violence. It's about human trafficking and all the other horrible things that take place uh, as a result of having an unsecure border. Uh, but I'm very proud of our accomplishments. We're taking it very seriously. You know, uh, Governor Perry and Speaker Strauss and Lieutenant Governor Dewhurst in the past have done a very good job, as have the membership. And I feel very confident that Governor Abbott, along with the continued leadership of uh, Speaker uh, Strauss, along with Lieutenant Governor Patrick, will continue to do an excellent job in these areas with the body itself, with both the House and the Senate chambers, in advancing conservative legislation and funding that enables us to take this border issue very seriously. Let's face it, uh, the next two years of the Obama administration, I don't think we're going to see anything different. It's going to be up to Texas to continue to lead on this issue, and we will do so. You mentioned the budget and funding there, not to necessarily put you on the spot because it's just happened in the last week or so. You all in the House came out last week with a biennial budget, I believe, at about $202 billion. Uh, Lieutenant Governor Patrick earlier this week came out with his budget a little bit higher than that. Talk about the dynamics between the House and the Senate. There's a lot of speculation. It will be a curious back and forth. Do you see any positive, negative cooperation? What's your outlook for the bicameral you know, cooperation? You know, my perspective is I think both chambers are going to work very well together, right? Uh, I've got tremendous confidence and faith in my good friend and and uh, my state senator, Jay Nelson, uh, as chairman of finance. Uh, I think Senator Nelson will do an extraordinary job there. This is, I think, whoever's decided upon uh, from the speaker's uh, uh, team uh, decision process that will take place later this week on the uh, when, when basically all the various uh, hearing, if you will, or sorry, committee assignments come out, mm -hmm. I think we'll have a very strong appropriations leader there that will balance, if you will, uh, our ability to be successful. And I think that you know both uh, chambers will work very successfully. And I'm very excited about what the future will bring. And I think we'll have a great session for both the Senate and the House. There's been a lot of uh, discussion and possibility or talked about possibility about tax reform tax cuts. Give us your early prognosis of what tax-wise might come down uh, the legislative session. Look, make no mistake about it. We will provide tax relief in the budget that comes out of the House. Right? The, the Senate office is calling for tax relief. We're doing the same thing. Uh, we'll be very fiscally disciplined. Uh, this is a great discussion to have, right, in terms of tax relief. What is the right balance of tax relief between giving back to homeowners versus giving back to businesses? These are thoughtful discussions we need to have, and I think, you know, I'm very proud of the the team that will have assembled on both sides, both chambers, and the way we'll approach this issue very seriously. Uh, Representative Parker, you've been endorsed in the past by the Eagle Forum, the Conservative Coalition, all the uh, conservative groups unanimously in the past. Talk a little bit, if you can, about uh, the freshmen. I believe it's about 25 freshmen uh, coming in this session. Last session it was about 40. There's about 60 of you experienced hand, 60% out of the 150 of 40% are freshmen or sophomore. Explain what you're uh, thinking or how does that play into what the session might hold? Well, look, we've obviously had a lot of new members the last couple of cycles, uh, a lot of extraordinarily talented men and women uh, that are very capable and bring so much to the body. Um, no question, many of them are strong conservatives, and I think that obviously continues to drive, if you will, uh, where we are broadly as a caucus and where we are with the direction of the legislature. Uh, but again, you know, as you said earlier, uh, many people said that, you know, we had the most conservative session in history last time around, which I, I don't disagree with that. My perspective is we can continue to leverage that great success in the 83rd, here into the 84th, and I think these members will recognize once they get into the chamber, as they've now started for three weeks, and really assimilate with the body all the good conservative work that we do day in and day out and have been doing for many, many years. Well, speaking of recognizing, I want to recognize and respect your coming in and your time. I know you've got a busy afternoon. We want to appreciate you coming in, and we hope you'll come back to visit more with Texas Insider. Uh, Jim, it's my privilege. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you for your time. Folks, we appreciate you tuning in to Texas Insider TV. Hope you'll tune in on a weekly basis for our legislative updates. Remember, you're either an insider or you're not, thanks to Tan Parker, House Chairman of the Republican Caucus.